Good morning, all. Thank you so very much for being here. Welcome to York City Hall. We appreciate seeing so many people here, particularly from around. Um, all of our friends uh, here for an, an, an important uh, announcement and uh, introduction here. I want to thank all the elected officials who are here with us as well, those that are behind me as well as those that are here. Commissioner Doug Hoke, your county commissioner, thank you so much for being here. City Councilman Michael Helfrich, good to see you as well too, and other officials as well. We have um, more uh, folks that we'll introduce as we go through our uh, presentation this morning. But we are here, um, Representative Seth Grove from our, our York County delegation, a friend to York City, and uh, I'll let someone else introduce him. But we do appreciate his leadership in this effort. We've been working, the city of York have been, has been working um, since I've been mayor at least for the three years with the Pennsylvania Municipal League, who's uh, represented here today by our deputy director, Rick Shuttler and um, the chambers throughout Pennsylvania to put more issues on some of the areas of crises in the state of Pennsylvania. And one of the areas is uh, municipal pension reform, which is what Representative Grove is going to be introducing today. And we're extremely excited to partner with him on that introduction. But we've been working tirelessly, uh, in my opinion, throughout the Commonwealth over the last three years, bringing attention to this matter with the partnership of the business community, which was extremely huge for our organization, the League. And when that happened, it, it just felt like an avalanche. More and more uh, folks were getting the message and understanding the importance of doing something at the state level. So again, um, we are delighted that today is happening um, here in the city of York as we have our issues, our fiscal issues. You all have heard me talk about that time after time again. And without some reform, some change at the state level, um, we may find ourselves in some in, in more of a crisis than, than we are right now. But uh, the leadership that's necessary and the leadership that we've found at the state to help us in this effort um, is, is impeccable right now. We're excited about that. Again, with us today, we have um, Tom Balrich, President and CEO of the Lancaster Chamber of Commerce. Again, uh, those folks that were with us from the very beginning, actually with Mayor Rick Gray from Lancaster and really furthering this issue and making it uh, possible. So thank you so much for being here with us too, Tom. We appreciate that. We also have Council President uh, Perry Heath uh, with us too. So we have a, a, a section of uh, folks from, again, throughout uh, central Pennsylvania right now, obviously, but at the same time, elected officials who get it and are on board here with what we are trying to do. It has been an honor to work with our Chamber of Commerce um, and now our York County Economic Alliance and their president and CEO to really further this issue here locally and help our business folks understand the value of working together and pushing forward the initiative. And then he and I have had the pleasure of lobbying together at the state level um, on, on a very cause as well, too. So I'm going to introduce and ask uh, Daryl Alderson, the president and CEO of York County Economic Alliance, to step forward for a few words as well, too. Thank you. Thank, thanks for that applause. I'm going to apologize in, in advance. Um, I've been struggling with a little bit of a voice loss for the last couple of days. It actually sounds a lot better today than it did Friday night. Any of you that might have been at our annual dinner Friday night, I was fading in and out pretty badly. So I'm a little more consistent today, but please bear with me. Um, I want to thank, the, thank everyone for the opportunity to be a part of this and to, to really step up and take a leadership role in our community. And I want to commend Seth for what he's doing. And I'm going to speak from the perspective of the business community uh, in my comments today because the, the business community really is concerned with municipal pension reform. And it's because we have to understand that even the best managed communities don't have the tools they need to truly hold to truly hold down the often spiraling costs of pensions. In the business community, we wouldn't accept these circumstances, nor should, should our municipal leaders. They all, we all need the General Assembly to act to provide these cost controlling tools. Representative Grove's pension reform proposal is a bold step in the right direction. This legislation will maintain the fiscal integrity of the pension programs that so many employees count on for their retirement. 
As business leaders concerned with the economic development, we know that when our communities struggle, when they f fall into distress status or Act 47 oversight, it becomes increasingly difficult to attract and retain businesses. So as the national economy begins to show signs of awakening, we don't want the fiscal strain on Pennsylvania's municipal governments to stunt a full recovery in Pennsylvania. We must act. No one wants to live, work, or grow a business in a community that is being pressured to cut services and raise taxes. While our cities tend to be the front line of the pension crisis, these problems are not just city problems. In fact, at least one municipality in 66, in the six, of the 67 counties in Pennsylvania, is in severe distress. This includes rural townships and boroughs as well. In total, about one third of all Pennsylvanians live in a distressed municipality. I'm joined today by business leaders and elect official, elected officials from around the state, and they know what I know that the uncontrollable cost of municipal pensions is not just a problem for York City, it's a problem for Pennsylvania. And we're very pleased to have Tom Baldridge uh, from the Lancaster Chamber with us today. They've been a great ally in this whole effort. And I certainly want to wish, uh, I want to commend Representative Grove for his courage, and I emphasize courage and leadership in taking up this critical issue. And I want to encourage his colleagues in the House to join this effort with the backing of the Coalition for Sustainable Communities. We're very proud to be a part of that, along with Lancaster and many municipalities from across, across Pennsylvania. The time to act is now. So Seth, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Mayor Bracey, for being a wonderful host, your support and advocacy for York City, and, and obviously trying to do everything you can to help us uh, uh, get that data to, to help you fix your fiscal house. And obviously, I'm going to give you full credit for this beautiful day, too. No. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Daryl, thank you so much for your leadership as well. Um, pensions are basically legacy costs. And you know, there, there's not a municipality today that isn't seeing their pension costs increase. Um, and, and seeing it start to crowd out other aspects of their budget. So when they're, when they're sitting down to do their budgets, they're looking at pension payments are increasing. How do we then uh, provide the services to our residents that we, we, we traditionally have done? You know, are we going to have to cut back on police service? Are we going to have to cut back on fire services? Are we not going to be able to pave roads? Um, so it gives them a choice into uh, paying for their pension costs or not. You know, I, I represent a lot of regional police departments. They're looking at hourly cost increase. Um, so municipalities are looking, do we want to continue that same amount of coverage that we once had, or do we want to cut back on our police coverage? Um, do we want to, can, can we sustain this long term, or maybe we just do away with our regional police coverage and let the state police do coverage, which obviously, again, strains state police. So this is in transit. It's not a York City issue. It's not a city issue. It is a municipality issue across the entire Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Um, I'm going to get into the weeds on what this does. So now it's the time for your eyes to glaze over and go, ah, pension reform. How much fun is that? But it's, it's very, very simple. For current employees, there's no change. There's no change for current employees. You get to maintain your pension benefits from now until you retire, um, which, which is a great, great incentive for, for those individuals to say, well, I'm not I don't have to give anything up for this, um, which obviously is a great benefit to them and shows uh, the respect for their service of duty um, in, in what they face as a firefighter, police officer, as a public safety um, personnel. Again, no changes to current employees. Um, it freezes current employees and their pension benefit just to remove it from collective bargaining um, process. So um, it does provide a freeze in there. Uh, new employees will be placed into a cash balance pension plan uh, full vesting at 12 years with a partial vesting at 8. Retirement age will be 55 years old with 25 years of service. It's portable statewide and every municipality will be in the same plan. Uh, the employee or member credit will be 6% for employee in Social Security, 9% for member not in Social Security, and the employee credit will be 4.5%. Employees can also opt into a 457 plan for additional 
retirement benefits. Now, the big thing, what the heck is a cash balance plan? Uh, it's very popular. Nebraska currently has one. Uh, Louisiana tried to do one uh, statewide. Um, that's kind of going through the court process currently as they tried to enter um, current employees into that plan. Basically, there's two types of, of plans. There's a defined benefit and a defined contribution. Defined benefit uh, plan provides a specific benefit at retirement for each eligible employee, while defined contribution plan specifies the amount of contributions to be made by the employer toward employee's retirement account. Uh, in a defined contribution plan, the actual amount of retirement benefits provided to an employee depends on the amount of the contributions as well as the gains or losses of the account. A cash balance plan is a defined benefit plan based on IRS codes that defines the benefit in terms that are more characteristic of a defined contribution plan. In other words, a cash balance plan defines the promised benefit in terms of a, of a uh, stated account balance for that individual employee. In a typical cash balance plan, a participant's amount is credited each year with a pay credit. Again, in, in this, it's 6% for employees in Social Security, 9% for a member not in Social Security, and 4.5% for the employers. And an interest credit, which will be 0% to 4.5% based on Moody's AA nominal bond rating yield for the last business year of the preceding year. Increases and decreases in the value of the plan's investments do not directly affect the benefit amounts promised to participants. Thus, the investment risks are borne solely by the employer. And a cash balance plan is the only plan type that provides an avenue for paying down the unfunded liability of the old plan without requiring new revenue from taxes or bonds, and that's critical. By placing new employees into a cash balance plan, you don't close off the old defined benefit plan, so there's still money coming in and allows the municipalities to flex interest savings to pay down that unfunded liability, which is a critical step in paying down unfunded liabilities and helping municipalities across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania manage their pension costs from now uh, and, and well into the future. So basically, what does this mean? What does this mean for stakeholders who are interested in this? For current employees, it means pension protection and job security. It ensures that their pensions won't be underfunded. It ensures that their pension will be guaranteed for them. And it ensures job security. For future employees, it means a job future, because if you're not paying into your pensions and municipal budgets aren't being eaten up, it means you can get more people into fire protection, into police protection. It means a great pension continuing for, for that new employee. For taxpayers, it means less tax burden. The need for increasing taxes because of pension costs is carving out everything else in your budget. It's very critical for taxpayers. For elected government officials, it means a viable solution to a budget buster. It means adding firefighters and police officers. It means keeping our, or increasing police coverage. For regional police departments, it means lower costs as municipalities are struggling to see if they want to cut coverage or eliminate police protection altogether. Sustainability is, is what this legislation is about. Financial sustainability for local governments, financial sustainability for all their pensions for the employees, and sustainable public safety jobs from now into the future. Uh, in general, this legislation is a huge win for every stakeholder group that there is, and it's a, a viable way to fix our pension reform. So I appreciate everybody's time this morning. <coughs> Anybody else have comments? Anything from Lancaster? No? Anything? Aye, <laughs> aye. I mean, like, aye, aye. The, the only thing I think I would add, if mm -hmm. I could just one moment, Representative Grove, is, is the fact sure. that uh, I'm Tom Balger with the Lancaster Chamber. We are a strong supporter of this legislation and this entire effort uh, designed to ensure the future prosperity of, of uh, Pennsylvania's townships, municipalities, and cities. The, the only thing I would add, uh, because I always find it indicative of, of the issue at hand, is that when about three years ago, when chambers across the state got together and began to look at ways in which we could play a more active role in shoring up our city's fiscal healths, uh, as well as other municipalities, uh, the, at that same time, the League of Municipalities was, was doing a similar study at what they could be doing uh, more proactively and through legislation to shore up the uh, municipality's health. And independently, we both came up with the very same solution as a top priority, and that was pension reform. And I think it's indicative of the fact that if you really look at the facts, whether you're from business, whether you're from government, and you just analyze it from a practical perspective, uh, the, the necessity to get something done around pension reform is absolutely critical. It's clear. And I really want to commend Representative Grove uh, and those people that have signed on so far 
to for uh, for their support on this issue and hope that we can uh, use today as a launch pad to uh, continue additional support as well. So thank you very much, Representative Grove, for your leadership on this. Good morning. My name is Perry Heath. I have the privilege of serving as the president of Carlisle Borough Council. And uh, first, Mayor, uh, thank you for hosting us here today. And, and Representative Grove, thank you for your initiative and your leadership in moving this issue forward. The first thing I, I need to say about Carlisle Borough is that we are not a distressed community at this point, particularly in terms of, of pension. However, we are enlightened sufficiently to be able to see this train coming down the tracks. And at some point, uh, pension reform is, is mandatory. And the plan that is being put forth here is one that we think uh, provides a great deal of, of uh, middle ground, uh, protecting benefits that currently exist, uh, looking at cost savings and, and reducing the burden of the future on, on taxpayers. And frankly, we, we view this almost as a public safety issue because as the representative just very clearly pointed out, we get, uh, get to make several choices. The choices are either to raise taxes or reduce services. And at this point, given the fact that there is a way in this legis proposed legislation to fund the unfunded liability that currently exists, we don't have to raise taxes, but in, in fact, we can put more resources into public safety. So that train is the one that, that we want to be on board with whenever it comes down the tracks. So for us, it's a public safety issue. It's a, it's a commitment to reducing the burden on the taxpayers and at the same time, keeping our public safety uh, employees whole with a, a bright future for a solid pension uh, a benefit that they can enjoy uh, upon their retirement. So once again, uh, we're, we're very supportive and, and uh, we thank uh, Representative Grove for his leadership and, and Mayor for having us here today and, and uh, we look forward to this bill moving forward through the legislature. I'll just say, uh, I'm Rick Shuttler. I'm the Deputy Director at the Pennsylvania Municipal League. Um, I just want to thank Representative Grove. This is, uh, this, and, and uh, Daryl's comments were absolutely on point. It takes courage and it takes some real leadership. And on behalf of all of our members across the Commonwealth, this is a huge step today as we look to make um, our communities more viable. And the choices are, you know, public safety services being at the level that they need to be at, um, or dropping below that because the, the costs have become just unaffordable. So it's a great first step. We really look forward to working with Representative when we move this. And um, uh, we, need to do so we need to do something to make our local governments viable, to make them good places to live again. And this is a great start um, as, as we start to do that. So thank you. And thank you, Mayor. And, and thank you, Perry, for, for being here. We appreciate it very much. And Tom. Representative Grove and others obviously are available to answer any questions you might have. But again, York City signed on with this right away. We knew the importance of it. Again, at the time uh, with the chamber, with Bob Jen sitting is right by my side. And then on with Daryl Otterson, we uh, stayed in touch and continued to work this issue along with um, the other chambers across the Commonwealth. And I thank everyone for being here today. We appreciate the partnership, the leadership um, with the league um, leading that way on behalf of all the communities in the city and in the Commonwealth, along with the chambers on behalf of the uh, business community. So we're excited about this um, introduction, sir, and we wish you well, and we're standing with you. If there's anything more that we can do as a community, please let us know. Representative Grove can answer any questions you might have. Thank you. <laughs>